Hello and welcome back to another video on differentiation. Today we're going to be looking at a very specific area in differentiation where we're going to look at differentiating the two trig values sine x and cos x. So, so far in our differentiation topic, we have been looking at differentiating equations that might look something like this. So, values in terms of x, where x has got nothing to do with sine or cos or things that might look like this. Um, like that, we've looked at how to differentiate these and we said that we know how to do them. But what if we have a function that says something like this? Let's say we have g of x that has, for example, 3 cos x. How on earth would we differentiate this with respect to x? Well, that is what we're going to be covering in today's video. And we're going to start off by doing a bit of a definition that will tell you how to differentiate sine x and cos x with two very important rules. And those two important rules are, I'm going to do these in red. Let's get the red pen. So we'll say that the first rule is that the derivative d dx, so differentiating with respect to x, of sine x. We say that this is equal to cos x. So the derivative of sine x is simply just cos x. And similarly, we have that the derivative of cos x, it's up to you if you put brackets around your x, I'm just not going to do it to keep it less confusing. And instead of it being sine x, as you might think it would be, it's going to be minus sine x. So these are our two general rules for um, differentiating sine and cos uh, with respect to x. And these two formulae will be on your formula sheet. So if you forget that the derivative of sine gives you cos or the derivative of cos gives you minus sine, do not worry because they will be on your formula sheet. So let's go on to some examples that have equations or functions with sines and cos in them, and let's see if we can differentiate them. So our first example is just a nice and easy example. It says differentiate y equals 3 sine x with respect to x. Now instead of just having sine x, we have 3 times sine x. Now on the formula paper in the exam, it will tell you that the derivative of a sine x is just equal to a cos x. So whenever we have a factor in front of the sine x, it still differentiates the cos x, but nothing happens to that value in front of it. So you can use your formula paper or uh, your formula sheet to say that the derivative dy by dx, differentiating y with respect to x, is simply just going to give us three cos x. Now when we do questions involving sine and cos, especially with differentiation, it's going to be very important that we remember our exact value triangles. So I've just kept it up for this example because, well, we are going to be using it. But as you can see, this example here says a function f is defined by f of x equals sine x minus 2 cos x for all real values of x. So in this time, we've got two terms in, in term of x, and they're both sine and cos. And the second part of the question also asks us to find the derivative of the function when x is equal to pi over 3. So we immediately know we're going to be using our exact value triangles, particularly if this is in a non-calculator paper. So let's start off by working at the derivative, f dashed x. Well, sine x, we just said, went to cos x. So the first term is just going to be cos x. And we said that cos x 
goes to minus sine x. So we'll have minus 2 times minus sine x. You can see the two minuses will just cancel out to give a plus. So we'll have plus 2 uh, sine x. And if you want to visualize that in a more, um, with, with more working, we would simply say that it's cos x minus, and then we'll have minus 2 sine x, which, as we said, is just cos x plus 2 sine x. So our next step is to find f dashed of pi over 3. And we can see when we substitute that in for x, we're going to get cos of pi over 3 plus 2 times sine pi over 3. Now we can do this using our exact triangles, but if you do have a calculator, you can simply just put all that into the calculator to get an answer. But as we can see, cos of pi over 3, well, cos is in, in Sokotoa. It's adjacent over uh, the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. So it's going to be a half plus, and we'll have 2 times what sine pi over 3 is, well, sine in Sokotoa is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. So we'll pop that in like that. And I'll just get rid of this for us. And we can see we're going to get a half plus, and it's just going to be the 2's cancel out because we'll have 2 root 3 over 2, and the 2's will cancel out. So it's a half plus root 3. And because this is uh, a non-calculator paper, we can just leave our answer as this. Now, for our last example in today's video, a more complex example, we are asked to find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals sine x when x is equal to pi over 6. Now, because we've got pi, it looks like we're going to be working in radians in this question. And also, we need to notice that because we are finding the equation of the tangent, it's important that you do go and check up on our video about finding the equation of tangents, because it's been a couple of videos since we've done it. So we're combining what we've done already in our differentiation topic, but this time involving uh, trigonometric functions such as sine and cos. So if you remember, the first thing we need to do is find the point where the tangent meets this curve. So because we have the x is equal to pi over 6, we can find out the y coordinate um, of this point where the tangent meets the curve by substituting our x into our y. So when x, we'll say when x is equal to pi over 6, y is going to be sine pi over 6. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is just a half. So y is going to be a half. So now we have the point. So we say the point is pi over 6 and, oops, a half. So this is our point where the tangent meets the curve. And as we said, we need an equation of a tangent. We need a point and the gradient. So how do we work out the gradient now? Well, we said that the gradient of the tangent, we start off by saying when x is equal to pi over 6. Uh, actually, before we do that, we need to work out the derivative of the curve because we say the uh, the, the gradient of the tangent is when we substitute in the x value into the derivative. So we'll start off by working out dy by dx, which we've got sine x, which we said just goes to cos x. So when x is equal to pi over 6, dy by dx is equal to cos pi over 6. Let's work out what that's going to be. It's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So root 3 over 2. 
and we say that our gradient is simply just this value here. So we say the gradient of the tangent, I'm just going to do uh, m sub tangent to say that's the gradient of the tangent and it's equal to root 3 over 2. So now we have the gradient of the tangent. We also have a point on the curve. We can substitute it into our equation y take b equals m x take a, where in this case this is our m, this is our a, and this is our b. So we get y take a half equals pi over 6 x and our a is, oh sorry, it's not pi over 6, it's root 3 over 2 x subtract pi over 6 and now we'll multiply everything by 2 to get rid of this fraction so we'll get 2y and then 2 times minus a half is just minus 1 we'll get root 3 x subtract pi over 6 and then we'll expand the bracket here to get 2y minus 1 equals root 3x and we'll get minus root 3 pi over 6 and then all we need to do now is we can we've got these two root 3's on both this side so we can divide by root 3 so we'll get 2y minus 1 is equal to x minus pi over 6 just like so and then the last step is just take everything over to one side to get 2y and then we'll keep this as minus 1 minus x plus pi over 6 is equal to 0. And this is our equation of the tangent. So a lot of working there to work out the equation of the tangent. But you can just see we did our steps of working at the point on the curve where the tangent meets the curve. Working at the derivative, substituting x to find out the gradient of the tangent and then substituting it into our straight line equation to solve for the equation of the tangent. And that is just a more complex example involving differentiation of sine and cos.